Uh, regarding uh, Terrence, Terrence, what's his name? Terrence Howard? What was his name? Terrence, Terrence, where, where to go, Terrence? Oh, man. Where to go, where to go, where to go? Terrence Howard. Yeah, Terrence Howard has a website. So, since we're saying Terrence Howard has a website where he's hosting a common um, competition to create a drone that can fly in or orientation using hexagonal architecture he calls the linchpin and someone made one one of it works oh okay i haven't looked into it i haven't looked into terence howard deeply right chicho have you seen terence howard's theories he was on joe rogan recently seems a little loony uh here mr brain freeze just to uh, give you guys uh my take on terence howard uh flow what was the movie he was in uh flow he he was rapping fantastic movie by the way uh oh man what was the movie flow flow and hustle hustle and flow is that the movie hustle and flow hustle and flow yes hustle and flow that's where i know terrence howard from flow and hustle controllers that's where i know terrence howard from uh hustle and flow fantastic movie and it's hip-hop it's you know it's got uh kink in it it's got this and it. it's got that in it so it was super fun uh iron man yo you only know him through iron man actually i don't remember him through iron man i just i know him through hustle and flow right and i've seen him some other places but it hasn't stuck right and he's got like the light blue eyes and stuff like this so he's, he's very distinctive features right but hustle and flow stuck with me right and well he hasn't received any royalties from the song from that movie he didn't but did he write the song or uh the song is or was he just an actor and the writers wrote those songs right i don't know like hollywood the movie industry uh, the music industry it's just a scam right um so i you know it wouldn't surprise me if he didn't if he's not making money from it right mm -hmm. um but it's just recently that i came across his uh his mathematics that's what i came across on right he played the roadie for the first time don she uh, took over after okay uh yeah that's here see that is saying this i definitely don't like his one times one equals two or whatever like what the fuck see that i'm 100 with you on this because someone on bit shoot came along uh on a video that i posted like two weeks ago or something like this and he brought up terence howard right and i was like terence howard um so i looked him up i went oh he's the actor and he go he the person asked me chicho what do you think about terence howard's one times one equals to uh, the mathematics that he's been sharing and i went well one plus one times one equals two it just doesn't jive with me right uh because it's low iq low iq red rat if it's just talking about one times one equals two one times one equals one mathematics the five axioms of mathematics it's just a language it's just syntax one times one equals one right so i went okay i'll look this up so i went terence howard and i came across his twitter feed right and I went, oh, this is Terrence Howard. Hustle and throw right now. Woo Let's check this out, right? And he posted something about one times one equals two on a Twitter feed where he had like four or five images on it, right? And I, like just his reasoning behind it, like a proof, right? And I read the first page or the second page. Like, I don't know. I might have skimmed through the first page and read the second page or something. And I already, I saw some issues with his proof proof one of the reasons is is because people are going around and saying he's saying one times one equals two and right away you realize that he's not saying according to the syntax of the language of mathematics right he's not really saying that when you're doing math the syntax of math means one times one equals two he's saying this in special cases so there's uh assumptions 
disclaimers to this statement. But unfortunately, a lot of people are taking this and saying one times one equals two. And math is wrong. So I came back to the person. I said, look, uh, you know, I don't know too much about, about the thing, Terrence Howard, but this is pretty low IQ. One times one is not two. Syntax of the language of mathematics, no units involved. We're not saying one, one, I don't know, whatever unit you want to call it, a box times one triangle equals one box triangle. Oops, triangle, right? One box triangle, right? Because this is not true. One times one equals one based on the five axioms of mathematics. No units involved. But as soon as you introduce units, right, whatever these units might be, this might not be true, right? So for example, uh, one vector this way times another vector this way, right? Or adding, well, adding, we're talking about adding, but uh, I don't want to get into the vector stuff, may not be. Uh, you know, it's like the here, I'll give you the best example I have here. Let's do adding, because I, I don't want to get into the multiplication. Multiplication becomes a little complicated if you're doing different units and stuff like this. But let's say you're adding. So one plus one equals two, right? But you could also say one plus one equals zero, right? If you add units or direction, right? Make these vectors, right? And these could be vectors too. So if you have one unit vector going this way and add this with another unit vector going this way, then this plus this, if this is one and this is one, then one plus one, here, we'll do blue and so one plus one equals two. Okay. One plus one equals two. However, you could also do this. You could have this one vector going this way, right? And then you add a vector going in this direction. You could call that minus, but you could just say east, west, right? this way then if you add this and this you get zero because you don't go anywhere it's like forces right so as soon as you start talking about forces if you got a some kind of body here you got a this guy pushing <laughs> these stick figures pushing this way and another guy pushing this way if they're equal and opposite forces, then this doesn't move. But if you take this guy and say, hey, you ding a link, come over here, we wanna move this guy, and this guy starts pushing this way again, then this body moves that way. So it's, that's my take on is one times one equals two. I think it's, you know, it could be people interpreting it. I didn't bother reading the rest of the pages he had. It just turned me off of it, right? And then I saw his interview with Joe Rogan, right? No, I didn't watch the whole thing. I, I watched like 15, 20 minutes of it where he started talking about some esoteric stuff and, you know, and it came up later. Oh, he has all these patents and he's not being paid by the patent, but patent doesn't mean shit. There's lots of people who have patents that don't make any money. It cost them a lot of money to get the patent, but the patent's useless, right? And patent this and patent that and blah, 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 right? So I was like, okay, whatever. And they didn't bother watching the whole thing. And then I saw Cliff High or heard, uh, listen to Cliff High's audio, audios that he releases on Substack, his podcast. And he brought up Terrence Howard, mentioning that Terrence Howard has read some of the people that Cliff High has read. And they're legit people and he's quoting these people. But from what Terrence Howard was saying, he hadn't read 
at least one other person that Cliff High says is extremely important to read because it puts into context some of these people. And Terrence Howard, Howard was quoting this one other person that has been proven to be a scam artist, right? Just a grifter. So Terrence Howard was quoting this one person that was a grifter because he didn't know he was a grifter. And the reason that Terrence uh, Cliff High was giving why Terrence Howard was approaching it, you know, sharing all this information, which some of it might not be true and some of the information he's missing, is because Terrence Howard most likely is listening to these people or reading their stuff with um, an optimist lens where he's assuming that these people are telling the truth. While Cliff High, very cynical, very old school, whenever he reads anybody or listens to them or anything like this, he goes in there with the assumption that they're wrong and they're a grifter. So he needs to be proven that these people have valid theories, right? So once you do it that way, it's a lot harder um, to be fooled, right? If you go through it with, uh, you know, your innocent uh, perspective on information coming your way, where you assume that the person sharing information is legitimate and they're not hiding anything from you, then you might get fooled right so and this is something that our community those of us that were on gilda and discord before that when these things were rolled out in the last four years right those of us who went into it saying hey there's something wrong here question authority you would have been spared possibly some serious trauma were those people who assumed that authority, right, was, uh, had their best interest in mind, might have been seriously screwed, right? Now, I don't know if Terrence Howard was one of those people, but I sure know that Cliff High was not, right? So as soon as that happens, you realize, okay, this person has more critical thought. Now, you guys let us know. I haven't bothered looking into it because I don't care as much regarding what Terrence Howard has to say because I've read uh, whatever, not, not everything, but a fair bit of stuff regarding um, Tesla, his uh, electromagnetics, magnetics, EM fields, frequencies, um, all this stuff regarding electromagnetics and stuff. 20 years ago, 30 years ago, because I did my uh, degree in geophysics, electromagnetic, and I realized that there's a lot more to life and energy and um, existence. And uh, there's a lot of BS being shared through corporate science, uh, authority, teaching BS, uh, a lot of lies where they've omitted a lot of information regarding uh, everything <laughs> health from health to our understanding of the universe and all this jazz so terence howard to me seemed like someone who was trying to share that but i wasn't really into the way he was sharing it right because a lot of stuff was okay i knew that well that sounds a little wacko i would have to look into that but you have to dig into it a lot more there's a lot of people that was mentioning that i haven't read so i would have to read them to do critical analysis on them to see if this guy is telling the truth or if he's just knit, you know cherry picking some of the information and sharing that information because throughout history you know i've gone down a, down a rabbit hole with a lot of people and there's a lot of people that have shared a lot of info have talked elegantly and very authoritatively regarding certain mathematical and physics concepts where you listen to them you go oh, wait a second what are you grifter or are you just low IQ? So I wasn't I wasn't really into uh, going down that rabbit hole too much, right? Because one times one does not equal two in mathematics. 
Now, if you take these, depending on the units, and multiply them, you might get something else. But what is it are you talking about? I'm not interested in going down that rabbit hole. Um, as soon as the person says one times one is not is two, you just go, okay, dude, clarify, please. Okay, are you just being controversial for the sake of being controversial, right? I'd rather listen to people like Cliff High really go down the rabbit hole. Okay. Uh, Elder got to prepare for his role. Terrence Howard interviewed 123 pimps and 78 prostitutes over two and a half years. He lived with four different pimps, including a month-long stint in Memphis Brothel. <laughs> he survived that shit. Uh, uh, okay, I'm missing some chat. Yikes. Okay. Lark Bark, how are you doing? Da, da, da. For the first, uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I'm going to catch up on the chat on uh, Twitch game. Uh, I don't know why he would say that. I have one of one thing. So I have one. It's logical. It's logical. See that. Uh, control Zen. Howard starts to sound manic when, he's, when he talks about his theories. I'm not mathematically literate enough. Uh, to prove any of his stuff though. Yeah, uh, tell the truth, I'm not either uh, on that level. I'm not interested in going down that route. I saw a couple of flaws in the two pages that I looked at. Um, and I was like, okay, uh, I, I don't want to take this apart. It takes energy to do that. I've got other things to do. Synth Barry, what he says is that number two is the only only number where it's square square cubed is equal to square times itself square cubed which is true and very strange but i don't think it debunks conventional math like he claims yeah it doesn't whatever i've read or saw him say it doesn't debunk conventional mathematics and then one thing he was talking about was like there is no such things in straight line uh in nature and you know it's the same thing with circles there is there are no um uh, what do you call it perfect circles in nature right and he was saying there are no straight lines in nature if you zoom into it you get little things and there's nothing okay yeah so what i mean there's in mathematics when we talk maps right when we do circles trigonometry and stuff like this a squared plus b squared equals c squared and all this jazz that's euclidean geometry that means flat plane 2d 2d map but we have mathematics that goes beyond that right so one of the things we do in math right like here euclidean geometry basically means flat surface mathematics right so with flat surface mathematics, if I draw a triangle, it doesn't have to be right angle triangles. The sum of the angles A, B, C, so angle A plus angle B plus angle C is equal to 180 degrees. That's one of the properties of a triangle that's drawn on a flat surface, right? But this doesn't hold true if the triangle is not on a flat surface so if you for example take the earth this is my earth <laughs> sorry it's actually the equator should be polished let me try this better <laughs> it's not an egg but it's a sideways egg like this so here's the earth right that's a better circle right here's the earth right and here's the equator here's the equator now you could draw a triangle here right you could take these lines i always mess up these lines is these the latitude or longitude <laughs> seriously i always mess it up so you could take this line right and then take another line right that goes to the equator this should meet at top sorry and at the equator your longitudinal lines longitudinal latitude someone tell me please <laughs> I want to make sure I'm using the right words, right? So the equator line and these vertical lines, right? 
they cross at 90 degrees at the equator and then they meet at the top here right I forget <laughs> I know and there's a certain angle there or if they meet this is a triangle on a sphere right lat is flat that's how I remember latitude lat is flat long longitudinal okay longitudinal north south so these are longitudinal these are latitudinal latitude. thank you very much uh Plutorino, right so that's 90 degrees this is 90 degrees and this is whatever it is depending on how wide your longitudinal uh, uh what it call lines are right so on a globe this doesn't this doesn't work angle a plus angle b plus angle c is i don't know less than greater than greater than 180 degrees we don't know how much greater but it's greater right okay so we're gonna have howard terence howard come along and say trigonometry is not correct well no for f sakes what are you talking about this is this is not correct this is wrong well no it's right if you're on euclidean flat surface and it's something else if you're on a globe like <laughs> it's just simple as that right then do you want to go down the rabbit hole spend a lot of time for someone that comes along and says this is incorrect and he builds a whole theory on this thing i don't know I'm, i don't want to trash talk terence howard i haven't looked into the rest of his stuff right i'm just want to say that i'm not really interested to go down that rabbit hole because i've gone down down that rabbit hole with uh, many other people right in the past that is good good exercise fun to do but man i got other things to do right show show me symbolic logic symbolic logic right like yeah like don't rationalize and then all these assumptions all the all these proofs and disproofs and stuff like they all have like assumptions associated with them and some of those assumptions are like world shattering oh um uh, i don't know i can't even think of assumptions on on that level right so that you know they might have one assumption that dismisses a whole shitload of other things and if you do that then yeah you could come up with whatever you want right but is that a valid assumption to put in there I don't know i don't know all those assumptions right a fun exercise i i you know i think there was a hustle and flow too but i don't think he was starting in it uh you know maybe you should do some rapping with mathematics or something right i don't know uh, that's my take on uh, terence howard it was fun but i couldn't be bothered to listen to the whole joe logan rogan interview i listened to like 15 minutes i was like okay i'm already tired and bored like it, there was a lot of me in there he was talking about long as my vertical long as my vertical long as your vertical okay longitudinal latitude or longitudinal right and this is cool i like this i like i love this like trigonometry is amazing i love trig right explains a lot light sound like what the hell you can't dismiss all of mathematics because you have some assumption using certain units to come up with whatever and what was the thing that he says uh da, 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 the square root thing where was it oh someone posted that uh, it's a lark bark uh damn where'd it go oh yeah there it is synthberry what he says is the number two is the only number where it's square square cubed is equal to its square times itself hold on let's write this down it's square cubed it's square square root or square says that the number two is the only there by the way there are so many special numbers out there that you could mess around with them that they're special there it is square root of two cubed oh, here, thanks sense barry let me write this down square root of two cubed so square root of two cubed 
is equal to the square root of 2 times 2. Equal to square root of 2 times 2. Right? Okay. Well, what the f, f? So what? Fucking <laughs> like low IQ man. <laughs> Watch this. Watch this. Okay. So when you got a square root and a cube, you could just go like this. This is two here. This can go in the denominator, right? So this is two cubed over two, right? This is. Oh, by the way, we'll put a question mark here, right? According to the laws of math. We could do this, right? We're trying to prove this. I put question mark. You usually don't even put an equal sign, right? You go left side, right side. So here, left side of the equation, right side of the equation. Let's work our way through this, see if we can make one side equal to the other side. This is 2 to the power of a half times 2 to the power of 1. That's what that means, square root is half. And when you're multiplying two things, right, you just add the exponent. So 1 over 2 plus 1 which is equal to 2, common denominator is 2, so that becomes 1 plus 2, which is 2, 3 over 2. Okay, fine and dandy, that's what this is. Yay, yay, yay. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay, right? Now here's another way you can look at, look, you can look at it, right? This, here. Square root of 2 times 2, you could write it as 2 square root 2. Same thing, right? It's just better writing it this way. You never write it that way, right? Over here, you could write it like this, right? So square root of 2 cubed, you could write it as square root of 2 cubed. You could cube it first, right? Well, if you cube 2, you get 8, square root of 8, right? Well, square root of 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, and we've talked about this. Well, square root of 8, square root means you can grab two things that are the same, bring them out as one thing. So this becomes 2 square root 2. Yay! Yay! Like... <laughs> I see why Chicho's laughing. Like, what the F? <laughs> What's the fucking big deal? <laughs> Hello, big dog. Hello, bull pill. How are you doing? So, I don't know. It's just silly to me. Like, okay. Should we try another number? <laughs> let's try another number. Ready? <laughs> let's, let's, now that we know the two different ways we can go about this, let's try another number. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. So, we could do this. We could do this. <laughs> Ready for this? Uh, square root. Let's go cube roots. I don't know if it's going to work or not. I'm trying to. There's things that some big end. And then, yeah, I've had. Look, I've been in parties. I've been in parties where people have done a little bit too much drugs. And they know I like mathematics. And they come along to me and they go, Chicho, Chicho, Chicho. I discovered the meaning of the universe <laughs> really and I, the, meanwhile the, one time this happened and it was a build-up because for two months another friend that was really good friends with this person right was telling me that this person come out with mathematics the meaning of the universe i was like oh dude and i knew you know they were uh doing a little too much partying right uh and those that really end up, uh, they talk a lot, but it's a lot of BS, right? It's just garbage. It's just, oh, God, stop talking, right? So at this party, we meet, you know, we ended up being at the same party. It was a big party. And the person came up to me and said, and anyway, the conversation went there. Went there. And he started talking about this thing. I was like, oh, I was getting a headache. I didn't feel like dealing with it. Um, and I wasn't in the mood at that time. And then a month later, two months later, I, I saw him again in another part. And I said, hey, how did, you know, do you want to explain that math thing you were talking about last time? That, 
it was you know it was a big deal and they said oh yeah yeah no 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 it's okay uh i was mistaken i was like oh dude for fucking months you <laughs> anyway that's what it sounds like uh, i didn't want to drop too much information regarding this <laughs> off to look for Terrence's movie quote <laughs> uh, here check this out you could say you could say um uh, Three uh, is equal to here. Let's reduce it instead of me trying to do it. This becomes you could write this as three to the power of four. Three to the power of four means three fours multiplied together, right? So it becomes three times three times three times three. Cube root means you could take three of them, bring them out as one. So this becomes three cube root of three. <gasps> three, three, three. <gasps> wow, wow. So incredible where cube root of three to the power of four is, I don't know if it's the only one, but <laughs> it's cube root of three times three. And I can guarantee you that this is the only one that will have threes in there and it has threes like this. So this is really equal to three cube root of three times three. Like, I don't, like, just random shit, right? Yeah, that was a red flag. Like, <laughs> like I don't know. It's just silly, right? Like, don't we have better things to do than this, right? It's good mental exercise. It's fun. I mean, playing with numbers is fun, right? At least it gets people looking into mathematics. Uh, the rules of mathematics, the syntax of the language of mathematics and stuff like that. But anybody that comes along and says, I found a number that has the meaning of life, right? The only numbers that I know of that are really special, right? Are zero, i, pi, square root of negative one, and e, right? There are some other ones, but these are the core ones. And there's more meaning in zero. Uh, like if you can understand the concept of zero, which is directly linked up to infinity, which isn't really a number, it's a limit or an unknown. Man, this this concept here, this thing here, has sent th three of the. What was it? There was a documentary on for on lawful knowledge or something like this. It made one one of the greatest mathematicians in the world kill himself. And two other ones sent them to an insane asylum. And Terrence Howard comes along and says, what the hell was it? <laughs> the cube, no, the square root of two cubed is the only number, the square root of two cubed is the only number where it's the square root of two times two. Oh, I mean, for fuck's sakes. Uh, genius. Really? I hope that's not it. I hope that his, that's not his final thesis. No respect to him, but you're cracking me up. Oh, <laughs> well, his controller is insane. No, where is it? Where is it? Anyway, it's funny. It's funny.